Welcome everybody to our seventh World Radio Conference Advisory Council, or WAC. Uh, this is the seventh meeting, but it's our first in-person meeting because uh, we've all been working remotely. Thank you for those efforts. Those are sometimes challenging. And though it is our first in-person WAC meeting, it is our final WAC meeting to provide recommendations to the FCC. But um, thanks to all your efforts, uh, totaling about 70 different recommendations, about well, actually more than half of which we will be dealing with today. Uh, we have given the FCC all they need to know, I think, to uh, enter deliberations with the other agencies before we submit our contributions to our preparatory group, the uh, Commission on International Telecommunications, or CTEL. Uh, I won't go on further because we have a very important guest here to uh, spur us on to this, in this final stretch. So without further ado, Chairwoman Rosenworcel. or as we affectionately call it, the WAC. I still can't believe that's true, but apparently it is. Now, in keeping with the season, maybe some of you will follow me, let me start with the following question. Why is the WAC meeting here different from all other WAC meetings? And the reason why is while this is the seventh official meeting of the WAC, it's the first meeting we're doing in person. And, um, I've had more than my share, fair share of meetings where I make that point, but it never really loses its luster. It is good to see you all here sitting in chairs and in person. Now this meeting is also different because it's the first time any version of the WAC has met in our new building. So if you haven't been here before and if you're in the commission meeting room for the first time, a special welcome. This is also, as you just heard, the first WAC meeting of 2023, and that matters because you're preparing for work 23. It means you're wrapping up your work as the United States pivots to delegation mode for the work. Uh, speaking of delegation mode, I wanna really acknowledge and celebrate the appointment of Anna Gomez to lead our preparations for the World Radio Conference. I think everyone in this room knows that that's a really good thing. She knows these issues inside and out, having most recently served in a senior role at NTIA, but the truth is she spent more than a decade at the FCC. We're gonna claim her as one of our own, at least for these purposes. All right, now that we've reached the phase where you're wrapping things up, I really do wanna say very clearly thank you. I'm grateful to your chair, your vice chair for their leadership, and I'm grateful for all of you for the work that you put in. And I really do mean work, because this WAC has developed 71 recommendations since you first met in 2020. Your diligence developing these positions early in the preparatory process is so important because it helps the United States maintain its leadership in regional work preparations, which as you know, is critical to our success. And with your support, we're gonna take these recommendations as we gather with CTEL next month. Now, of course, this group understands that the World Radio Conference prep never ends and it's never too early to start thinking about our next gathering. So thank you for the work you've done to develop proposals for the future agenda in, I can't believe this, 2027. Again, your output here has also been prolific. You've worked hard. We've got proposals for future agenda items relating to mid-band mobile spectrum, cis-lunar communications, satellite space-to-space -space links, and NGSO Earth stations in motion. The future is going to be very busy. Finally, I wanna note one other reason that today is special. As we announced last week, today's the day that we are officially establishing the FCC's new Space Bureau and Office of International Affairs. We're gonna have more details on that at an event later, but we are excited about this reorganization. We think it is more modern and we think it will be, it will be a structure that will help bring more focus to these issues, which is something I'm sure everyone in this room can sign up for. So join us at 3 p.m if you are still around. So again, I can't thank you enough for volunteering your time, energy, and expertise to help us with our preparation for this meeting coming later this year. You've done this committee, by extension, the FCC proud, and uh, I'm really excited for our continued collaboration in the coming months on the US delegation. So thank you, thank you all for your work.
Well, we thank the uh, chairwoman for those kind remarks and for hosting us in this lovely facility. Thank you. Uh, I should have noted that I am not or we are not up here alone. We also have our vice chair online, Brian Tremont. I don't know if he wanted to say a few words. I don't know who will enable him to say a few words. <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay, oh, okay. he's okay. beaming there in. I am. From That's terrifying. Okay. Well, um, I just wanted to thank everyone. As the chairwoman noted, uh, this was going to be our first in person WAC meeting. I was very much looking forward to that. However, COVID had other plans for me this morning. So alas, I am joining remotely. I do want to thank the chairwoman for her leadership, particularly on the international stage. I want to thank the members of the WAC for their extraordinary collegiality and dedication and productivity over the course of the last few years. And, and thank everyone for the opportunity for me to serve alongside my, uh, my partner in crime, Tricia, uh, in uh, accomplishing so much. So thank you all very much. And I'm very sorry I can't be there in person, but look forward to the meeting. Thank you, Brian. And one clarification, there was no crime, no crime. But uh, I will now uh, ask that we pull up document 68, the agenda, and ask for its approval. Do I have a motion to approve it? Thank you. A second? Thank you. So the agenda in document 68 is approved. Uh, we've uh, done a few of these doc, uh, entities. We're now on uh, three, so we are going to have approval of the minutes now uh, requested of the WAC. That's in document 69. It's up on the screen for you. Can I have a motion to approve? Thank you, Brendan. Uh, second? D uh, thank you. So the minutes are also approved. Oh, I, okay. Okay, Mr. Weller, you are recognized. Thank you, I, w I was just moving approval. I'll be quiet. Thank you, Bob. All right, we are now going to ask that uh, we have an update from our agency colleagues on their work preparations. And I'm going to ask Dante to update us first. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Chair, and good morning to everyone. Good to see everyone here. Uh, and and uh, I'd like to just uh, provide a very brief update. Uh, many of you were at the uh, conference preparatory meeting uh, over the course of the last two weeks in Geneva, or if you were there virtually. Um, I would note that there have been certainly some progress on many agenda items in terms of the, the, the methods or perhaps the regulatory procedural examples that were uh, discussed and perhaps uh, produced uh, as an output of the uh, CPM last week. Um, certainly that may have some, let's say, direct, uh, let's say implications, maybe good implications, maybe, to improve uh, some of the uh, methods or approaches that our WAC proposals have already taken or perhaps we're considering today have already taken, but I think just to, to, to just address that, if, if for some reason maybe a method or perhaps a regulatory example has changed as a result of the CPM output, that we can address those, uh, those changes uh, during the course of the preparations for the U.S. CTEL uh, delegation. Uh, we can certainly look at our WAC and, and reconcile the NTIRCS uh, documents to see where we may need to make some changes, hopefully mainly modest changes. I don't expect anything going to completely reverse uh, our proposals, but we can do that during the course of the uh, CTEL U.S. delegation discussions. And as part of that on the ground, we can reflect on any new changes that we may need to make with regards to any U.S. proposals that we submit to CTEL. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. Um, also, I wanted to mention that uh, as uh, Madam Chair has said uh, this will be our last uh, WAC meeting. Uh, and uh, again, to thank everyone for all of their support, commitment, and time that uh, we put in. Uh, COVID was, uh, was a big challenge for, for our work, but I think we've managed to, to succeed in, in many sense. We've accomplished um, what more than what I have anticipated we were able to, to do. So thanks again to everyone, and thanks to the IWG chairs, and of course, the leadership of the WAC at the committee level uh, by uh, uh, Tricia and by Brian. And uh, Brian, hope you get better quick. 
Um, the, the last thing I wanted to mention is going forward uh, with regards to our continued work, uh, noting that we still have many issues to still address uh, going forward, uh, that we would likely address those as part of the U.S. WRC preparations that uh, our, our new uh, U.S. head of delegation will be managing uh, Ms. Anna Gomez. And so under her leadership, we will continue to again address any uh, issues with regards to our U.S. Uh, proposals to the conference. And so the process doesn't end after today. It'll continue. It'll continue sort of in a different form, but more or less the same type of discussions, same type of coordination, collaboration amongst each other that we hope to uh, uh, continue uh, moving forward towards uh, WRC 23. Um, and again, uh, a big thank you to, to everyone here. Um, we'll continue to work together. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dante, our designated federal officer. He's been, of course, great support as well as his team. And uh, so we thank you for all your <laughs> tireless, well, maybe you are tired, but you seem to be working 24-7. All your efforts, we appreciate it. Uh, now, we are next going to have an update, I think, from NTIA. I see Dr. Patton in the room. Okay. If you could come up and, yeah, I think you'll join the podium. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Mr. Glass couldn't be here in person today, so he actually asked me uh, a few days ago if I would please show up in person to the WAC meeting, and of course, I'm honored to be here at the first WAC meeting in this building and the first in-person meeting and, of course, the last meeting of the WAC. Uh, at the RCS, we continue to work diligently on U.S. positions towards WRC 23 agenda items and WRC 27 preliminary agenda items. Um, Following the CPM, as was just mentioned, uh, uh, the CPM was very uh, hectic and very busy. Uh, some of the federal agencies are already updating our proposals to reflect changes in the methods or, and, and other texts uh, related to the CPM uh, output. But of course, that's the CPM output. That's just the, um, the guidelines, the report to the conference on the possible methods and the results of studies. But what we need to work on now are actual proposals. And so from the federal viewpoint side, this is what the RCS does, uh, we consolidate the federal viewpoint and we present that um, as a consolidated view so that we can hopefully work with the FCC and with the delegation in order to come up with U.S. positions. And of course, we have a CTEL meeting coming up and we would very much like to have as many proposals as possible to go to that meeting, this will be the meeting that is just prior to the, uh, to the uh, final meeting of CTEL in Ottawa, which is where uh, a lot of the IAPs will be decided. Um, finally, as a part of the update, I would say, yes, we're working diligently. The RCS process will continue. Uh, we will continue to pr provide uh, consolidated federal viewpoints to the delegation, since we will be shifting into delegation mode shortly, um, and we will be providing that towards the ambassador uh, as, as she moves towards becoming the ambassador towards uh, the WRC 23. And I think I'll leave it with that unless there's any questions, and I think I'll just stay here because I anticipate the next item on the agenda I will be needed up here at the podium. You're very wise, Dr. Patton. You are staying up there. Uh, any questions? For Brian, all right, if you could just move into presenting your draft proposals, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. So I see you have a very long agenda today, so I'm going to be as brief as possible in presenting the RCS inputs uh, into the uh, FCC's WAC. Um, four documents are on the agenda, and they are 107, 108, 109, and 110. And so just in brief, without getting into any granularity, uh, back in January, we sent you a document in which we provided um, a revised proposal for Agenda Item 1.17. 1.17 has gotten an awful lot of attention lately. It's on the inter-satellite links. And we have an even more recently revised version of 1.17 reflecting the CPM output. We also sent you uh, a, a proposal for uh, uh, Agenda Item 7, Topic B, addressing non-GSO bringing into use post-milestone procedures. Uh, also, Agenda Item 7, Topic D2, addressing uh, changes to Recommendation S1503, which need to be reflected in uh, the radio regulations uh, Appendix 4 parameters. 
And then uh, agenda item topic uh, seven, topic J, addressing modifications to resolution 76, which is on coordination for aggregate EPDF uh, limits for non-GSO fixed satellite service systems. Uh, I will note that the WAC and the IWGs have had these for some time, and we've also received, you know, informally, since we provide observers to the WAC, we've gotten some feedback on those, and it's very much appreciated in this, in this process, and it will help when reconciliation comes. Uh, for document 108, we provided uh, proposals on agenda item 1.11, which addresses uh, regulatory action to support modernization of GMDSS and implementation of e-navigation. We also uh, provided a proposal on agenda item 7, topic C, addressing protection of geostationary satellite networks in the mobile uh, satellite uh, service operating in the 7 and 8 and 20 and 30 gigahertz bands. Um, and then in document 109, we provided uh, some proposals on what we would consider more mundane uh, standing agenda, agenda items, but the federal agencies noted that for agenda item four, which is on uh, the status of resolutions and recommendations at the ITU, we have suppressions that we su submitted to, to the WAC for its, uh, for its consideration on resolution 75, uh, 160, and 161. And these are mostly uh, resolutions that should have been suppressed, uh, but were uh, overlooked at the conference for whatever reason. We also provided a agenda item eight proposal to align a country footnote for the United States, number 5.394 in the radio regulations, with the actual frequency usage of the aeronautical mobile service for telemetry, again, in the United States. And then uh, we provided a agenda item 10, future conference agenda items. Uh, we provided a confirmation of the preliminary agenda item on the WRC 27 agenda for item 2.8, which is inter-satellite links, this time using MSS satellites and frequencies. And so this is a continuation of what we're doing in this conf upcoming conference on intrasatellite links using FSS. And finally, for this document, we provided a new agenda item on topic, uh, t uh, agenda item 10, uh, with a topic addressing cislunar communications, which we know that the FCC WAC process has been developing their own version of this type of proposal. And finally, for document uh, 110, I will apologize again. This one was received by the FCC rather late in the game, and not all the IWGs got to properly consider these proposals, but we're still hoping that at least if, if the FCC and the WAC process can have a look at these and provide feedback, it will be helpful in reconciliation. We provided a, uh, a um, new and revised proposal for for agenda item 1.13, examining a possible upgrade to primary status of the SRS in the uh, 15 gigahertz range. Agenda item 7, topic A, addressing tolerances for certain orbital characteristics of non-GSO space stations. And finally, a, a new proposal, again under agenda item 10, future conference agenda items, for changes to Appendix 26 for wideband HF communications, has many similarities to WRC 23 agenda item, I believe it's 1.7 on updating Appendix 27. But again, the uh, process did not have a chance to look at those as carefully as we might like, but we still hope to get feedback from the WAC and the FCC so that we can use in reconciliation. With that, I will conclude my summary and uh, turn it back over to you, uh, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Pat. And I believe all of these uh, recommendations, including from the NTIA, will be put out for public comment, and the WAC and the general public can comment on it at that point as well, so that you will get feedback one way or the other. Dante? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Patton, for that. And we certainly appreciate the uh, proposals from the RCS, um, noting that, uh, as uh, Madam Chair, you've said, we will put all of these documents as part of our uh, FCC public notice uh, on all the WAC recommendations. We will include the NTIA. Uh, RCS proposals uh, so that uh, everyone can can review them and provide any additional comments, uh, noting the fact that there was uh, one uh, proposal that came in uh, very end uh, at the very end of the IWG cycle. So, so certainly anyone can can pr review and provide comments on those. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Barra, and thank you, Dr. Patton. Now we will hear from the informal working group chairs, uh, beginning with IWG1 for uh, maritime, aeronautical, and radar. So, Mr. Ladson. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, Dante, and good morning, everyone. 
So for IWD1, this cycle we had 17 meetings. Uh, we considered 70 documents covering WRC 23 agenda item 1.6, which is stations on suborbital vehicles. Uh, agenda item 1.7, which is a satellite allocation for VHF AMSRS. Uh, agenda item 10, or excuse me, 1.10, which is non-safety aeronautical mobile. Agenda item 1.11, which addresses GMDSS modernization and also an additional satellite provider of GMDSS communications. Um, uh, at our last meeting, we uh, took up agenda item 8, uh, that deals with uh, country footnotes, and we looked at modifications to footnote number 5.394. And then finally, we looked at WRC 27 preliminary agenda items 2.1 and 2.10. So for the documents uh, for consideration today, we can begin with uh, WAC document 71, and I don't know if it's going to be shown on the screen. Okay, so this is agenda item 1.7, uh, which is for a VHS, a VHF AMSRS uh, allocation. And if we could scroll right down to the uh, proposal itself. And what we're proposing here is to add an allocation at 117.975 to 137 megahertz. And that'll be subject to certain limitations to protect uh, terrestrial aeronautical mobile that's operating in the band now. Um, so um, I, I'm, for each of these, I'm just going to go straight to the proposal and, and not spend a lot of time. But if we can pause there for questions, Trisha, or at the yeah. end. Are there any questions from folks in the room? I don't see any. So I will. Uh, OK, so with that, um, we give that to you as our recommendation for agenda item 1.7. Okay, and then moving you. on to... Well, I think uh, we're going to ask for oh. approval per document. Okay. So uh, can I have a motion for approving document 71? Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. I see it. So document 71 is approved. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. If we can bring up uh, WAC document 72. So this is agenda item 1.9, and this is for uh, wideband HF communications for aeronautical mobile. And again, if we could scroll straight down to the proposal. Here, we're proposing modifications to Appendix 27, and this would allow the, um, uh, the combination of contiguous and non-contiguous existing um, um, AMS channels into wider bandwidth channels for wideband communications. And associated with that, you'll see that um, there's uh, certain changes uh, to emission designators, et cetera. And the idea is to, when the channels are combined, you would still remain within the existing envelope of uh, the narrow band channels. So that is our recommendation, recommended proposal for agenda item 1.9. And Tricia, I turn it back to you. All right, are there any questions on document 72 for agenda item 1.9? Seeing none, can I get a motion to approve this document? Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. All right, so document uh, 72 is approved. Thank okay, you. great. And then if we can move to WAC document 73. And this is, uh, uh, this is not a proposal. This was a fairly late breaking um, submission to IWG1. There was some discussion on it. It's uh, um, to be reviewed under agenda item eight, which again addresses country footnotes. Um, the idea here is to align the, uh, the frequencies in number 5.394 of the radio regulations uh, with US footnote 276. Um, there was some discussion. There was, su there was support for this. Um, we didn't have uh, counter views, but one consideration was whether or not uh, this type of uh, proposal can be considered under agenda item eight. So what you see on this screen is what IWG1 thinks about the matter. Um, it's not an actual proposal, but I turn the document back to you, Tricia. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Latson. are there questions on this document? All right, if not, can I get a motion to approve it? 
Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you. All right, so document 73 is also approved on agenda item eight. Okay, if we can move to WAC document number 74. And this, this one is basically a view of IWG1. This uh, deals with agenda item 1.11, which is GMDSS modernization, as well as the addition of another satellite provider of GMDSS communications. Uh, this specific uh, uh, comment is in response to NTI's RCS proposal that looks at issues A and B of agenda item 1.11. Those two issues deal with the GMDSS modernization. Uh, issue C, we've disposed of already in IWG1, and that deals with the additional satellite provider. So as you can see here, um, our view is that we do not have um, objections to NTI's proposals for issue A and B. And I can say that narrow and direct printing, things like that, you know, we're not, we're not that concerned about uh, from, from the member's standpoint. But in any event, Tricia, I turn the document to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I have a question. So does this relate, I see it, you reference IWG 164, the NTIA letter. I assume that is uh, sub, uh, superseded by the more recent letter from NTIA and document 109 that Dr. Patton reviewed, or are they the same Ooh. recommendation? You got me there. Oh, I stumped, <laughs> I'm stumped not, the chair. I'm not sure. <laughs> you would, could you address that, Dr. Patton? Yeah, um, the uh, document that came to you in the most recent uh, letter from NTIA on 1.11 were simply some updates to correct some edi editorial issues, but now the WAC should have issues A and B in a document, and then issue C was handled in a separate document. And so the latest contribution merely unites them all and corrects some, some typographical errors. So um, I don't think it would cause any harmful ramifications if you worked against the version that you're working against. Uh, we'll sort it out. Right. Okay. Right. And, and again, on, on this one, um, IWG1 had no objections to NTI's work on issues A and B. And again, issue C is the additional satellite provider for which we've already sent a proposal to CTEL. So that issue is cleared up. But anyway, um, Tricia. Okay, uh, thank you for that clarification, both of you. Um, do I have a motion to approve? Yes, thank you, Dr. Jansky, and thank you for that second. Okay, so with that, 74 is also approved. Okay, if we can move to document 75. Again, uh, this is a view, and, and this deals with um, the uh, preliminary agendas for WRC 27 and agenda items 2.1 on the preliminary agenda and 2.10 on the preliminary agenda were under IWG1's purview. Um, uh, you could, I, I don't know if you see it on the screen, but anyway, 2.1 deals with allocations to the radio, lo, uh, radio location service, the frequency band 231.5 to 275 gigahertz and 2.10 deals with improving the utilization of VHF maritime frequencies in Appendix 18, and IWG1 had no views in these matters. Okay, well thank you for Back that. Back to you, Tricia. Yeah, wrapping up with an easy one. All right, uh, can I get a motion to approve 75? Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Thank you. All right, with that, all of your documents are approved. Damon, congratulations yes, to you Don. and your fellow IWG1 members. We appreciate that. Right, so and so you. that concludes IWG1's work. Um, I'd first like to thank my vice chair, Kim Kolb, who uh, took a couple of meetings for me and did virtually all of our minutes, since, as usual, there were no volunteers from the membership. Um, also, the issue coordinators, um, Andy Roy, who uh, did agenda items 1.6 and 1.7, um, and also 1.9 as well. This was a late breaking proposal and Andy wins the award for quickest from submission to approval. He did it in one meeting. So whatever, what, what, whatever the award is, you get it. <laughs> we'll figure that out later. Um, and also uh, Don Jansky, who uh, coordinated some of the GMDSS issues and Scott Kotler, who's responsible for this uh, um, agenda item eight, as well as agenda item 1.8 on UAS. And then finally, the FCC team, our DFO, Dante Barra, Mr. Luis Bell, 
who was invaluable in giving us advice, Greg Baker. Um, I don't know if he's still in the room. Our NTI liaison, Bruce Lamb, who was very helpful as well. And finally, to all of the participants. So with that, IWG1 concludes. Thank you, Tricia. Yes, thank you again, Damon, for all that and for you publicly shaming the non-minute taker volunteers. That's an important function and it should be spread. All right, with that, we will call to the podium the informal working group for terrestrial services, Jane Stankovich. I, I thought you said circuses, which <laughs> wasn't sure whether to take offense to or not. But um, uh, we don't have quite as many consensus documents as Damon does. Um, so first, I'd like to start with we had five informal uh, working group two meetings, as well as numerous, numerous offlines on all of the agenda items that we'll talk about today. Um, so starting with our first document, we have document 76, if we can put that up on the screen. And document 76 is regarding agenda item 1.1, which pertains to the 4.8 to 4.99 gigahertz band. And we were unable to reach consensus on this document, so we forward a view A and view B. Um, on these documents, I will not go into what the views say. I think they speak for themselves, and I don't want to um, interpret them. Uh, we had many, many offline discussions. Um, we've made as much progress as we can towards resolving some of the issues, uh, but we do have a view A and view B for uh, agenda item 1.1, and if we could provide that to the commission, if we could seek approval of document 76. Okay, and I think as I said earlier, uh, the, the public comment period will allow all the WAC members and the general public to, to expound to your heart's content on which particular view you might prefer. At, at this meeting, we're going to try to keep it tight since we are a little bit time li limited. You are not staying here till 3 p.m. That is, <laughs> you know, just for your records. Uh, but anyway, can I have a uh, motion to approve this document, 76? Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Thank you. Uh, with that, document 76 is approved. All right, and next we have document 77, if we could put that on the screen. Document 77 is the last of the frequency bands under consideration for agenda item 1.2, and this one is related to the 10 to 10.5 gigahertz frequency band. And similarly, we have a view A and view B uh, situation here. And as I said, this will wrap up all of the agenda item 1.2 frequency bands, and hopefully we can provide all of those to CTEL. Uh, so uh, if we could take approval, Madam Chair, for document 77. Uh, thank you, Jane. Uh, do we have a motion to approve 77? Thank you. And would you like to second that? All right. <laughs> so we have a second, and 77 is approved. All right. And then we have document 78. And just to change things up, on this one, we have a view A, B, and C. And this is with respect to a future agenda item for IMT. And similarly, since we have three views on this one, if we could also seek approval of this for that. Would you care submission. to give the public a hint of what range we're talking about? <laughs> uh, it's an uh, expansive mid-band, let's say, uh, different, <laughs> I, well, I don't, uh, there are different, different ranges. So, it's, you know, between seven and 18-ish, um, depending on which view. Okay. Well, again, there but, is but that really, I want them period. to read the entire, like, 45 pages. <laughs> 40, 40, all right. So. Can I have a motion to approve? Thank you. And a second? OK. Uh, with that, 78 is approved. And then the next document up is document 79. And this is with respect to agenda item 10, uh, work 27, uh, preliminary agenda item 2.9. So this is the 1.3 to 1.35 gigahertz band. And here we also have a view A and view B. Okay, thank you for that, Jane. Is there a motion to approve? Thank you. Uh, can I have a second? Thank you. All right, with that, 79 is also approved. All right, and now we get to the easier document. So document 80, and this is feedback on work preliminary agenda. Uh, the di items that were assigned to IWG2 were uh, 2.4, and we noted that those discussions were going on in IWG3. 
and then uh, 2.9, and we just covered that in document 79, and then 2.12, and basically uh, that notes that it's a CEPT proposal, and that should be handled within the work delegation mode. So that is uh, just providing the views, preliminary feedback, feedback on the preliminary uh, 27 agenda. Okay, thank you, Jane. And I know this was a very helpful document, certainly provided to the IWGs. Does it have a WAC number, do you know? Or? This one's document 80. No, document 80, I'm sorry. So this is what was assigned to IWG Correct. 2. Okay, uh, thank you. All right, uh, can I get a uh, motion to approve document 80? Thank you, and a second? Okay, thank you. So with that, uh, document 80 and all of IWG2s. Oh, no, no, I we think we have uh, two late breaking ones okay. just to keep things uh, moving. So we actually right. had submitted these early because they were consensus documents. Uh, so document 111 is on agenda item 9.1 issue B. And this was a consensus uh, document that we had, uh, we had done earlier in the cycle. So this one is a consensus document and this is with respect to the amateur and satellite service. So if we could take that one for approval. Uh, yes, is there a motion to approve that document? Thank you, and a second, thank you. All right. And we have one more, and this one was also a consensus document approved, uh, submitted earlier uh, by IWG2, and this is on agenda item 1.3, which is the 3.6 to 3.8 gigahertz band in region one, and that was also a consensus document, document 112. All right. Do I have a motion to approve document 112, consensus? Thank you, and a second? Thank you, all right. With that, I can uh, congratulate you on all your documents being approved. I, I do want to thank I the guess. membership here. Um, so first, I, I want to thank our chair and vice chair for the WAC, and then uh, our DFO, as, as Tricia noted, uh, Dante's been tireless, um, or very, very, maybe very tired, uh, but uh, a lot of support throughout the IWG two process. Um, Mike Mullenix and Scott Kotler, I think, did a lot of the uh, the drafting. Mike was. Uh, a, a machine turning things out uh, and a lot of offlines. Uh, ASPA had done uh, probably one of the more challenging ones and although you do see a lot of view A and view B here, it is because there are different interests and different perspectives. Um, there were very civil uh, offline discussions to try to get to a point where we could address some of the issues and provide clarity over where the differences of opinions were for the FCC. And although we, they're not consensus documents, they were certainly well discussed um, and hopefully informative to the FCC in terms of trying to figure out what positions to take into the reconciliation process. Uh, Dottaline has been a great vice chair. I think it's been uh, an experience. Uh, <laughs> don't know how many really like the experience, but uh, it, it's great membership and I do. it's great to see everyone. Um, it's been a while since I've seen many of the people here in the room. So thanks for everyone for the cycle and uh, best of luck for the, for the work for the U.S. Okay, thank you, Jane. And yes, the, the discussions domestically, why they can be contentious, although civil, obviously prepares us for the international discussions, first at CETOL and at the WARC. So it's, it's good to air it all out, right? So we got to get our laundry done here first domestically and then go succeed internationally. All right, with that, we will welcome uh, Giselle Creaser up, our chair of the Informal Working Group 3 on Space Services. Okay. I feel like I need a little stool here. I'm shorter than everybody else, I guess. Um, well, thank you, Madam Chair, and um, hello to everyone. Well, we've had six meetings since the last WAC meeting, and we've had lots and lots and lots of informal offline meetings as well. Um, we have 17 documents to present today. So IWG3 was very busy this last uh, last few, few months. So um, I'll just go ahead and jump in. So the first document that we'll consider is document 81. And this is, um, was addressing agenda item 1.12, which was looking at for, in the 45 megahertz range for secondary allocation to the EESS 
And here we have um, a proposal for a no change. So I'll present that for your approval. Okay. Uh, is I see an approval. Is there a second motion? Okay, thank you. All right, that was quick. So 81 is approved. Okay, great. Okay, the next document is document 82. And this is dealing with agenda item 1.13. That's looking for a SRS um, space research service upgrade in the 14.8 to 15.35 gigahertz band. And here we were not able to reach consensus. So we have a view A and a view B. So I'll present that for your consideration. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve it? Thank you. A second? Is that you, Ryan? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. With that, uh, 82 is approved. Thank you. Okay. Our next document is 83, and it's dealing with agenda item 1.14, which is looking at EESS passive allocations in the 231 to 252 gigahertz range. Um, so here we do have a consensus proposal, so I will present that for your consideration. Do we have a motion to approve? Thank you. A second? Thank you. So with that, we have uh, 83 also approved. Okay, thank you. So the next document is 84, and it deals with agenda item 1.15. And this is looking at GSO eSIM operations in the 12.75 to 13.25 gigahertz band. And we were not able to reach consensus on this one, so we have a view A and a view B as well. So I'll present that for your consideration. Thank you, Giselle. Is there a motion to approve this? Thank you. A second? Thank you. All right, so 84 is approved. Okay, the next one is document 85. And this deals with agenda item 1.16, which is eSIM um, operations with NGSO systems in the KA band. Um, and here we did reach consensus, but I note that there's an annex two that deals with the methodology, and there's been some work that's been going on in some of the correspondence groups for 4A, so there might be comments on that um, when it's put on the PN, but it is a consensus document, so. I'll present that for your consideration. Thank you, Giselle. All right, so 85, do I have a motion to approve? Thank you, a second, thank you. That's approved. Okay, the next one is document 86, and it's dealing with agenda item 1.17, which is um, looking at intersatellite links in the KA band. Um, and just, I'd like to mention on this one, even though we don't have consensus, the group made considerable, considerable uh, progress. So I think the view A and view B are only on certain um, topics. So um, I'll present that for your consideration. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve 87? Sorry, 86? Which one is this? 86. 86. Motion to approve, thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. Okay, so the next document is document 86, and it's dealing with agenda item 9.1A, and it deals with space weather sensors, and we do have a consensus document on this one, so I'll present that for your consideration. I think I started the confusion, but this is document 87 on 9.1.A? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, do I have a motion to approve it? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. So 87 is also approved. Okay, great. So those are the end of our proposals on uh, agenda items for the, um, so now we move into preliminary future agenda items and these are agenda items that were um, adopted at the last conference as possible agenda items for work uh, 27. So the first one is document 88 and that deals with future agenda item 2.2, and it addresses uh, QV um, eSIM for both NGSO and GSO um, systems. So here we have a view A and a view B. So I'll present that for your consideration. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve 88? Thank you. And a second? You were adjusting your glasses, or was it? Okay, thank you. So we have a second, and 88 is also approved. Okay, thank you. 
So our next document is 89, and this dealt with the future agenda items um, 2.3 and 2.7, um, which were additional FSS, well, 2.3 was additional FSS allocations in the 43.5 to 45.5 gigahertz band. Um, and I think the view of IWG3 for this one was that the we've already had a proposal for additional allocations in the 51 gigahertz band, and that that is sort of a higher priority than this frequency range. Um, and then on 2.7, which deals with NGSO FSS feeder links in the 70, 80 gigahertz range, um, the IWG3 views this as not a priority for um, work 27. So I'll present that for your consideration. All right, thank you. And thank you for also highlighting that it is addressing two different agenda items on the work 27 preliminary agenda. All right, so for 89, do I have a motion to approve? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right, with that, 89 is approved. Okay, so document 90 is dealing with um, future agenda items 2.4 and 2.5. Um, and these were dealing with 71 to 76 gigahertz and 81 to 86 gigahertz for um, protection from satellites of incumbent services. So these were combined um, and we have two views. We have a view A and a view B for these two agenda items. So I'll present that for your consideration. Yes, thank you. And uh, just note that so altogether with what you've been presenting, there are three different agenda items on the preliminary 27 agenda that deal with the same band that what we would call E-band. So uh, anyway, do we have a motion to approve document 90? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. I feel a bit like an auctioneer, but all right, now we will go to uh, 91. Thank you. Okay, so document 91 deals with the future agenda item 2.6, which addresses space weather. Um, and here we have, I think, uh, yeah, an agreed uh, approach, and it's really to seek another avenue instead of changes to the radio regulations to address this particular issue. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'll present that for your consideration. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve 91? Uh, yes, okay. Um, I just wanted to make one correction. It's not only to look at other avenues, but also to potentially consider um, that uh, a, a future agenda item might be possible. I think that's in the reasons. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, with that, do we have a motion to approve it? Yes, thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to your document 92. Okay, so document 92 is the last of our future agenda items. Um, it's, uh, and it was on future agenda item 2.8, and it was addressing space-to-space -space links for NGSO, MSS systems, and L-band. So here we have a consensus document in document 92 for your consideration. Thank you for that consensus document. Uh, is that a motion to approve? Thank you, Brennan, and seconded. Thank you. All right, so your uh, future agenda items are approved with 92. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, okay, so document 93 is actually some comments on the NTIA proposal on the agenda item future agenda item 2.8 that we just addressed. So this is just providing some comments on the NTIA proposal. We didn't really have a time to consider it. This was, we got um, late in the game. So we just wanted to provide some comments for the FCC's consideration during the reconciliation process. So that's document 93. Thank you. And I see you do have a few more on the oh, yeah, future agenda to. item 10. All right, thank you for that clarification. Is do I have a motion to approve 93? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. Okay, moving on. Okay, so the, the last uh, four documents are under agenda item 10. So they're future agenda items, but not ones that were um, on the preliminary proposal for work 27 already. Um, so the first one is contained in document 94. Um, 
and this is looking at intersatellite links in C-band. So a future agenda item to study that. And we do have a consensus, consensus document on that. Um, so I'll present that 94 for your consideration. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve 94? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right, that's approved. Okay, great. So document 95 um, is a future agenda item that's looking at additional MSS allocations. Um, and we do have uh, just one, we don't have a view A and a view B, but there were um, concerns raised by membership regarding the specific frequency bands that were identified. And you'll see in the proposal that those are shown in square brackets, but we wanted to go ahead and get this um, to the commission and on PN for future um, consideration. Well, thank you for that diligence. Uh, do I have a motion to approve 95? Thank you. And second? A lot of bands in there. I know you care. <laughs> second. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair. Oh, sorry. Question. Madam Chair, this is Robert Weller with the National Association of Broadcasters. Uh, I'm not proposing any change to document 95, but I did want to mention that NAB um, also has concerns about certain of the frequency bands mentioned in this um, document. Uh, it's not necessary to add us to the list of, of concerned entities, but I did want to express that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Weller, for that. All right, thank you for that. So we will, pardon? Yes. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. So with regards to this particular WAC recommendation and the square brackets, certainly we would uh, invite any further comments as part of the FCC public notice uh, indicating uh, your views on, on well, all of the frequency ranges, but in particular the ones in square brackets that uh, were, were highlighted uh, during the discussions. And given that this uh, particular document in the IWG3 context was sort of a, uh, a, a very challenging uh, discussion given the very short time that was uh, given, uh, we certainly welcome any further views on, on the frequency bands and, and the scope of the, the document itself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Ibarra. To, on to your okay. next two. Okay, so document 96 um, is a future agenda item that looks to study the EPFD um, regime that's been a, in the radio regulations for NGSOs to protect geostationary satellites. And here we were not able to reach consensus, so we have a view A and a view B. Thank you for that. Uh, do I have a motion? Yes, and a second? All right, thank you. All right, so 96 is approved. Okay, so our last document is document 97, and this is views on the NTIA proposal on cislunar communications. Um, and here we were not able to reach consensus, so there's a view A and a view B. All right, do I have a motion to approve? Yes, thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right, with that, uh, that concludes a very long list of documents. You've been very busy. Thank you, Giselle, for that. And I'll turn it back to you. Okay, well, um, first of all, I'd like to thank all the participants. Um, I especially right. like to thank Ryan Henry, my co-chair, um, and of course, Dante for his support and guidance through the process. And um, I don't see Alan in the room, but thanks to Alan Yang for always keeping us straight. Um, so, um, and obviously all the participants, especially those who um, were in charge of offline discussions. I know they were, they were difficult, but they took a lot of my work off my plate. So I appreciate that very much. So thank you. All right, with that, we are now on to our fourth and final informal working group. So uh, Steve Baruch is gonna come up on regulatory issues.
Okay, well, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chairman. And we have always had a lot of fun on regulatory issues in IWG4. It's a rare breed of individual that deals with these things, but uh, we enjoy ourselves. Um, we've had six meetings since our last WAC meeting, and we covered a lot of topics. The main topic we deal with in IWG4 is WRC 23 Agenda Item 7, and that deals with, with issues in concerning the coordination, notification, publication of um, satellite and, and terrestrial network filings and, and the establishment of the master register and how it's, it's kept. And under that agenda item, or, or that agenda item this time, there are 13, well, going into the CPM, there were 13 individual topics. Um, several of those don't concern our region, so we don't have proposals on them, but we have proposals on about half of them. Um, or comments on, on NTIA proposals. And each one of those is sort of like its own agenda item. They're very involved and, and, and delicate. And then we also deal with um, some of the other standing agenda items. Two, four, which is, re four is a review of resolutions. Eight is country footnotes. And you'll see some of the comments we have on those. So we have nine documents for you today. Um, and I can start right through with them if you wish. The first one up is document 98, and this is a proposal from our group on agenda item four. And here um, we are proposing the suppression of resolution 160, which is one of the resolutions that was indicated in, in Dr. Patton's presentation. Um, this was an oversight, you know, shockingly, by WRC 19 that it didn't finish this, it didn't suppress this item when it finished work on, on one of the agenda items. So our proposal is to suppress that under document 98. Okay, now these aren't sexy agenda items, but I appreciate the cleanup. I think that's, uh, that's good housekeeping. Do we have a motion to approve 98? Thank you, and a second. All right. Thank you, with that, 98 is approved. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item, uh, next document is, is WAC 99. Um, here, we received very late in our process um, three proposals from NTIA RCS on agenda item four. Um, all of them were proposals to suppress resolutions. Um, 160 was, was the one that's covered because we had that in our works. Um, we did take a look at those items in our final meeting um, just before the CPM, but we did not have an opportunity to address them in detail. So what we're doing here in this document is reporting to the WAC that we didn't have a chance to formulate a view on the proposals to suppress resolutions 161 and 175 that are brought over by RCS. So we're just completing the loop there. Thank you for that very clear explanation. Do we have a motion to uh, approve 99? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right, that is approved. Okay. So document 100 is the first of our documents for, for this meeting on um, an agenda item seven topic. In this case, document 100 deals with agenda item seven topic A, which as we heard from Dr. Patton is the subject of orbital tolerances for non-geostationary systems. And this is a very, um, very difficult issue, a lot of, lot of moving pieces in it. Um, and not surprisingly, in our group, we had a view A and a view B on this. Um, I will note that we did receive a proposal very, very late in the process, I think the morning of our final meeting from NTIA. And just an observation on, on my side is that one of the views in this document is, is relatively closely aligned with that view that came from NTIA. So we have the view A and view B, and I offer you document 100 for your consideration. Can you share what view is aligned with NTIA in document 101? Um, the or view, 100, sorry, 100. I, I can. View A is, is relatively closely aligned with that. Both view A and view B are, are aligned with methods that came out of the CPM. So Thank you. They're all reflected there. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve 100? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. Uh, with that, 100 is also approved. Okay. So document 101 is another agenda item seven document. In this case, we're dealing with agenda item seven, topic B. 
and that has to do with the possibility of creating a post milestone procedure um, for maintaining or for keeping the number of satellites in non geostationary constellations reasonably aligned with what's recorded in the MIFR. Um, there was a proposal from the NTIA RCS side for no change under topic B, and our group considered that and endorses that proposal without change, and that's what's in document 101. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve 101? Somebody who hasn't had the pleasure? Okay. And a second? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. 101 is approved. Thank you. And then 102 it deals with agenda item 7, topic C. And in this case, this, the issue here is dealing with protection of GS, geostationary MSS in the 6 and 7 gigahertz range and then in the upper part of the KA band range, so from, from 20.2 to 21.2 and 30 to 31 gigahertz. Um, there, it's a complicated item, um, but we received a proposal from NTIA RCS on this topic and we considered it carefully in our group and agreed that it was something that we should be endorsing without change. So that's what you see in document 102. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve 102? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right, with that, 102 is approved. Thank you. Um, 103 is a proposal. Well, let me take a pause for a second. So, agenda item seven, topic D, is actually three different elements. All of these are considered to be relatively low hanging fruit, so they were grouped under one topic in uh, Working Party 4A's consideration of, of Agenda Item 7 topics. Even though they're unrelated to each other, they're considered relatively easy topics. I think after going through all this, I may debate that, but um, Topic D2 is the subject of Document 103, and this one addresses changes to Appendix 4 primarily to align with uh, revisions to a recommendation in, in study group four that is being considered, recommendation S1503. Um, we are careful to note in this document that the proposal we have before you aligns with the work that has been agreed to date in Working Party 4A. That work is ongoing and there may be further, <coughs> excuse me, further revisions to um, the preliminary or I guess it's a preliminary revised recommendation, S1503, at the June-July meeting of Working Party 4A, and out of that may come some additional modifications to um, Appendix 4. So there's a note on the front page of this indicating that, that more work may need to be done before the conference and before the final CTEL meeting in Ottawa on this, uh, but this reflects the state of play at the moment. So with that, I offer you this document. Thank you. Okay, thank you again for that explanation. Is there a motion to approve 103? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right, with that, 103 is approved. Okay, thank you. The next document, 104, deals with another one of those um, topic D proposals. In this case, it is topic D3, which is assessing the need for a reminder to be sent by the Bureau a radio communication bureau um, that once an administration or starts the 90-day process for bringing into use um, frequency assignments to non-geostationary satellite systems, um, they they need to report 30 days after the completion of that. And this this proposal calls for a reminder to be sent by the bureau if that hasn't come 15 days after the end of the process. Um, I think that's probably enough of an explanation on that. Um, it does contain about six different proposals, but they're all the same because the, the same procedure applies in two places in Article 11 as well as in Appendices 30, 30A, and 30B. So the, the, it's the same general proposal repeated a number of times, and I offer that to you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion to approve 104? Thank you. And a second? Reza, was that a second? Can I have a second? Thank you. <laughs> All right. With that, 104 is also approved. 
Okay. Um, my last but one document is 105. In this case, it deals with agenda item 7, topic J, and that is looking at the possibility of establishing um, what is known as a consultation meeting procedure for um, non-geostationary FSS systems in the KU and KA band to assure that the aggregate EPFD limits that we've heard a little bit about in some of the other proposals are not exceeded and to provide a mechanism for quickly bringing them back into compliance if there is a potential exceedance. So here, um, I think there's a lot of agreement on whether to establish this procedure. The question and the reason why there are two views is the timing of when to do that. So one view wants to do this at WRC 23. The other view wants to look at this for, a, uh, for the next conference. And it's a complicated issue here as well. Um, I will note that we did receive a proposal on this subject from NTIA. And once again, one of our views aligns with the proposal from NTIA. So I offer you document 105 for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to approve 105? Thank you. And a second? Thank you. All right, with that, 105 is also approved. Okay, thank you. And then our final document for this meeting in this cycle, I guess, is document 106. Here, once again, and, and this may align with something that, that IWG1 dealt with, because um, I didn't realize they were dealing with this as well. We received the proposal from NTIA um, for under agenda item 8 for a modification to footnote 5.394. Um, this is agenda item, item eight is the country footnotes and the proposal from NTIA was to align um, the, U, the footnote with the US usage in that band. Um, we received this late in our process. Um, we took a very quick look at it, but as with some of the other late procedure, late proposals, we were unable or not in a position to formulate a view and that's what we report in this document. So I offer you 106 for your consideration. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, do I have a motion to approve 106? And a second? Uh, thank you. All right, with that, I think all your documents are approved. Congratulations. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and if I may take this opportunity, I would like to, to thank, um, in particular, my vice chair, Alex Epstein, for his support and his work and, and all the participants. Um, Alex led an offline for us on, on one subject, and I don't see Hastiara in the room, but he led another one on, on the two topics we have, view A's and view B's on. Um, they really you know, did a, a yeoman's effort to, to try and bring us to closure, but we'll get there, um, just not in this cycle. Thank Dante for having the faith in me to, to pick this up midway and, and, uh, and bring it to, to a conclusion, and, and to, to you and Brian for, for uh, all the guidance and support, so and obviously the members and, and everybody who contributed to the work of IWG4. It's, it's a pleasure to, to do this, so, and a privilege, so thank you. And with that, we are going to have an administrative and other information update from our designated federal officer. Yes, thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to introduce uh, a, a under item 7A, a, a brief update and on the uh, Federal Advisory Committee uh, requirements for record keeping. This is a, a mandatory, you must listen and you must take notes and there will be a quiz at the end. <laughs> so so please, I'll, we have uh, Ms. Gamble from our OGC office that uh, will give a very brief uh, update on that. Teresa, you're online? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Doris Gamble. There will not be a quiz, I promise. <laughs> um, I'm the acting agency records officer for the FCC. Uh, thank you for Dante for granting me some time during this meeting to go over some record keeping responsibilities. Um, the National Archives and Records Administration oversees all 
records management programs for federal agencies. And back in 2019, NARA came to the FCC to review our record keeping practices with a specific focus on how we handle our permanent records. And as a result of this assessment, we established some procedures to help ensure that we're meeting all of our requirements. So as you all know, the Federal Advisory Committee Act requires that advisory committees create and maintain accurate and complete records of their activities, including meetings, discussions, recommendations, all the important work that you guys do. We want to make sure that that's all captured. Um, these records are essential for transparency and accountability, and they may be subject to public disclosure. So to fulfill our responsibilities under the FACA, it is important that we do our part to create and maintain these records. And this includes taking notes during meetings, preser preserving relevant documents and materials, and ensuring that they are properly organized and managed. And the way we do that is um, using what's called a general record schedule, um, which the National Archives created for all federal agencies to use. So they said there's going to be some commonalities across agencies. So specifically for federal advisory committees, um, they created General Record Schedule 6.2, Federal Advisory Committee Records. Um, and uh, I'll make sure that your DFO has a copy of this and will um, make sure that it's accessible to you all. But basically it outlines all of the different types of documentation that are required to be transferred to the National Archives in accordance with the proper retention schedule and all that. So you don't have to do a whole lot of thinking, just it tells you exactly what records to keep and for how long and how to transfer them. Uh, it's important to note that this schedule is media neutral, meaning it applies to all records regardless of the format. Um, so that means, you know, the time frames keep for however many years um, applies across the board, whether the records we're talking about are paper, audio, visual, electronic, um, but mostly everything's electronic these days, right? Um, the meetings that you guys have are recorded and we work directly with our audio visual team to make sure those get transferred um, appropriately to NARA. So you don't have to worry about that. And, and really, all of this means to you, you know, I'm just here to remind you, you do have, you know, a prop um, record keeping responsibilities, but we've tried to make it as easy as possible. And all you're really required to do from a record keeping perspective is make sure that your DFO has a complete and accurate record of that documents the committee's deliberations and decisions. And we've made this simple. Um, by just copying the DFO on emails pertaining to the business of the committee or its working groups. And also, um, I don't know if there is a group mailbox yet, but if there's not, I'll work with um, your DFO to set one up. And um, out of that mailbox, that group mailbox, anything pertaining or relevant to this committee should be copied. Um, and then at the end of the year, what we do is, um, in accordance with the record schedule, you'll contact me or Dante will, and we will make sure that all of those records get rolled up, captured, and transferred to the National Archives. So you guys don't have to worry about it. Um, I just want to remind everyone that, you know, we're all responsible for creating and maintaining accurate and complete records of our activities. If you have any questions or concerns about your responsibility, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself. Um, again, my name is Doris Gamble, um, or to Dante, and he'll he'll um, he'll let you know where to go for help or questions. Um, again, once a year, we'll ask. Or you'll see an email from myself or. Um, the CMO uh, requesting for records of the appropriate time to be, you know, collected and organized and transferred. Basically, you just tell us where they are and we'll go in and grab them and roll them up and package them for transfer to NARA. Um, and again, that general record schedule 6.2 um, also has a attached checklist that has an end a uh, FAQ. Um, and I'll make those make sure you guys get have access to those resources. Um, and I think they'll answer a lot of questions and clear up some 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 stuff for you. Uh, I think that's it. I don't have a quiz. 
But if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out. Thank you all for your time and attention today. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gamble. And this is why I tell these engineers, you know, we lawyers are important, okay? You gotta keep your records <laughs> organized. All right, well, uh, with that, I think you are going to give us an update on our timeline from here on out. Are we on the work prep timeline? Yes, thank you very okay. much, uh, Madam Chair. And um, this is our normal little timeline that we take from the uh, ITR website. Uh, but we also throw in some CTEL dates in there. Um, as I said earlier, going forward, uh, we will still be working our respective agenda items towards uh, WRC 23. Um, we will certainly be uh, working together under the context of the US WRC delegation uh, after this WAC meeting. Um, and certainly we will uh, look to work out our documents uh, with the NTIA uh, and to reconcile your approved recommendations today uh, so that we meet the next uh, PCC2 meeting, which of course everyone's aware is scheduled in May of this uh, year, May 22nd uh, to May 26th in Mexico. Um, we will, that's the limit meeting as everyone is aware, so we will need to submit our documents in order to, to meet that limit meeting. As I mentioned earlier also, of course, uh, throughout the course, uh, we, we may need to make tweaks to our uh, WAC recommendations, or at, at this point, at that point, it will be US proposals, uh, given the fact that there have been changes uh, regarding the CPM output. I think as Steve Baruch alluded to, also there are ongoing studies in the ITUR uh, with regards to some of the items, uh, like Agenda Item 116 on the, uh, uh, Earth stations in motion for the NGSOs. Uh, so, th so there's still some ongoing work that we still need to account for in our, in our WRC proposal. So we'll certainly handle those under the uh, CTEL hat, the CTEL delegation hat. And that, of course, is being led uh, now by, uh, by uh, Ms. Gomez as the uh, US head of Dell for the WRC. Um, if you can scroll down a little further, Alan, please, uh, you'll see just the remainder of the ITUR schedule, but heading down towards the, our final meeting of uh, PCC2, which is towards the end of August of this year in Ottawa, uh, that will be essentially our, our attempts to try to wrap up our, our inter-American proposals for the conference. And of course, it is adv advantageous for the US to try to have all of our US proposals become part of the inter-American proposals because that represents the region. And so that will, of course, be our objective for that. Um, of course, much of the agenda item 10 work that you've already started and completed to this point will be taken into account, uh, hopefully as early as this limit meeting coming up in May. But I'm sure that uh, a, a large uh, portion of the time spent in, in Ottawa in August will be dedicated to agenda item 10 as well. And then if you can scroll down to the end there, Alan, of course, we have a workshop coming up in late September. The I2R is having their customary workshop. I believe this one will be a, a, a quite a, a good uh, workshop to be at if you can make it, because by then uh, all of the regional organizations, CTEL, CPT, ASMG, et cetera, will likely have uh, very clear positions and proposals from their respective regions, uh, regional uh, groups uh, to present. So that'll be very informative uh, for everyone to, to see where things are sort of going towards leading up to the WRC. And then uh, we'll skip to uh, the very end there. You'll see the radio assembly, uh, which is uh, right before the WRC, the, the week there to address all of the uh, ITUR uh, work from the study groups and, and of course to consider any possible uh, approval of uh, recommendations, questions, and ITUR resolutions. So, so that one is also of course a, a precursor to the WRC. And finally the WRC which will be held in Dubai as everyone is aware up uh, towards the end of November for four weeks. And then we have the CPM 27-1 which kicks off the, the next cycle. So everyone I'm sure will be ready to go right after spending four and a half, five weeks in, in, uh, 
and the UAE, we'll, we're ready to go right back at it, no rest. <laughs> Thank you very much, that's it. No rest for the weary. I see a question from one of our WAC members. Yeah, uh, thank you. A uh, question with regard to the last CTEL meeting. Uh, the information I have is the following week. I thought, uh, I didn't know if something has changed. I have it as August 28th through September 1st. I didn't know if, uh, if something's changed and, and as it shows a different week. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're correct, uh, Scott. I, I think that's, a, that's probably an old schedule. So, so in fact, the, the CTEL PCC2 meeting in Ottawa did shift a week. I think to, to, to avoid overlaps with other regional groups. So, so you're right. So, so add a week to that, it'll be uh, August 28th through I believe the 1st of September, yes. So, so don't book your flights for August 21st. You'll be there <laughs> a week early and nothing will be decided. Thank you. All right, thank you for that question to clarify that schedule, Scott. Uh, and as we heard from our general counsel guests, there are some uh, record keeping requirements. So I, I, I believe uh, new disclosures from WAC members could be done electronically, right? We don't need those written or? Uh, if, if, you, if those uh, new WAC members would like to make any disclosures now, they may choose to or they may submit a written disclosure to the WRC-23 at FCC.gov uh, group mailbox, and those will be reflected in the final minutes that we uh, captured today from today's meeting. So, but those are, they're welcome to make any disclosures briefly, please, uh, right now if they'd like. Any public oral takers, or do you wanna just send your emails? Hi everyone, I'll keep this brief. My name is George John. I'm the primary representative on the WAC for the Association of American Railroads. I've been asked by the FCC to just disclose that I'm also acting as an observer for Planet Labs. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, Brennan? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. My name is Brennan Price. I am uh, serving on the WAC in my capacity as Director of Regulatory Affairs for Inmarsat. Uh, I have uh, been asked to disclose uh, my personal capacity as a licensee in the amateur and amateur satellite services, uh, because of which I will be recusing myself uh, from two issues, agenda item 9.1b and the 10.0 to 10.5 gigahertz uh, issue within agenda item 1.2. I've submitted a full disclosure uh, to the DFO and to you, and that'll appear in the minutes. Thank you. Yes, and we did receive that. All right, that looks like that is all. Uh, the email that uh, Dante mentioned, work23 at fcc.gov, please send an email noting your uh, attendance. Now, particularly since we're in person, most of us, uh, that will be part of those records that will make you part of history, as we heard from Ms. Gamble. Uh, and I believe that's all, unless you have any uh, Remarks? Well, okay. I, I do want to thank again Dante for all his hard work and his colleagues at the FCC. I see Greg Baker there. I know he supported IWG1 and perhaps others. Louis Bell, who's he's moving around to keep, you know, mobile and active like he's been on, on several of these IWGs. I think Eric Grodsky's out there. Uh, Alan Young, uh, who did all the minutes and kept us uh, compliant with the, F, you know, the federal record keeping requirements, so we, we obviously couldn't have done it without your support and that of your team. So I do want to thank you. <laughs> and I guess with that, our meeting is closed. So thank you for all your hard work. See you in Dubai.